People, welcome back to Politics Watch. This is Serpy. Now, today I'm going to talk about the people who make or break Jamaica's justice system. I'm not talking about the DPP. I'm not talking about the big fancy lawyers. I'm talking about the witnesses. That right there, or those people right there, ultimately decide how a case end up. A solid witness, a witness that is credible, a witness that actually shows up to court is almost undefeated. No care how good the, the defense lawyer is, no matter how much big name they want to have, they will tell you the one thing we're afraid of the most is a solid witness. Because Jamaica's justice system, even though you have things like DNA and forensics and all these things, Real and truly are the witness really make or break the case. And the same thing applies if you're America to our UK, Canada anyway. Witnesses are very, very important. However, in Jamaica, our witness protection program, uh, let's just say it has it has a, a couple more it has a way to go. Right. I don't wanna say it's garbage because that would be unfair. It's actually a, it's a decent program. Decent. That's one way of putting it. And when I saw Dr. Horace Chan came out and said in the papers recently, um, this was uh, the, in the Jamaica Observer on August the 13th when he said the witness protection program may need additional funds because so many people are joining the program, so many people are starting to come forward to give information that they need more money. Now, Dr. Horace Chan said that without any apology, and I'm quoting him here, without any apology, we run a very good program, end quote. Now, I know people who have been on the Witness Protection Program and people who are still on the Witness Protection Program. The people who are still on it, I don't know them personally. People who contact me through social media, right? And so far, well, they've all been women, right? So, it's all women, so I don't know if that helps shape the feedback they're giving me, right? Based on a few things I'm going to mention in this video. But, this is what I'm hearing. So, hopefully... If Dr. Harris Chang is hearing this, or, or anybody from the Minister of National Security or the Ministry of Justice, whichever ministry it is, think of this as not an all-out attack. Think of it as some areas you can improve on, because I know you are very proud of the Witness Protection Program. However, these things right here are from people who are actually on the program and people who have had to leave the program. Take a guess as to how much an adult gets who is on the witness protection program. Bear in mind, they have to leave their house. Any of them leave them, have to leave it completely. Leave their homes, leave their communities, leave their friends, and they have to stay at some safe house. Right? So obviously, they can't go get a job down the road. They can go look at work. So they, they, they lock up in the house. Just call it right through. Guess how much money somebody on the witness protection program gets? 20 thousand Jamaican dollars. If you are a couple, then it's 30,000 Jamaican dollars. That money right there is supposed to get you food. You're supposed to buy food and look after yourself with that money. 20,000 Jamaican dollars. Now, how many people think they can take $20,000 for a month, right, for the month, and, and, and live any sort of decent life? How many people think they can pull that off? 20,000? 30,000 if you're a couple? So that's really 15,000 between two. It's, it's even lower. Come on. Listen, I understand. I'm not saying they should be getting millions a month. Right? That is obviously not my point. But 20,000 Jamaican dollars? 30,000 if you're a couple? I don't think the Jamaican people know that. I don't think people realize so small the money is bearing in mind what people are giving up they're giving up their job they're giving up their homes they're giving up their sanity imagine being under quarantine for five years you see like oh um all the people them who've been suffering because them are doing around two months around three months of them yard sick of the, the, the covid imagine having to do that for five years because that's how long a trial take Moving into the next point, because the trials in Jamaica take so long to conclude, people go up on the program thinking, say, well, my God just step on it for a year or two, the most, and then after them lock up the person, I can come off. No, people live on the program for years, 
four, five years, six years. People depend on the program till they have left. People get fed up and left the program. I know people in real life, right? This is not I'm not talking about nobody will link me to social media now. People in real life who were on the program and got so fed up that they left. They would rather die than stay up on the program. Think about that. They would rather die than can't be with it no more. Twenty thousand dollar a month, and this is just the money side I'm looking at. When you get the twenty thousand or the thirty thousand a month, if you spend it off before the month done, dog name your support. No, they will tell you, oh, well, you're supposed to budget. But guess what? People, when I lock up in a yard all day, what do you do? All they do I eat. All they want, they have nothing to do except maybe watch TV and eat food. So you're going to go through food faster than normally. Even without the, even when you're active, twenty thousand is a very tight budget. Imagine when you lock up in a house. You can't go, you can't go, you can't go, you if you, if you, if you brother, I keep a birthday party, you can't go. You can't go look for a friend, nobody can come look for you. In a way, people on the witness protection program are serving their own sentences. People need to realize that. Even though they're the one who, in most cases, is a victim or something, or they just witness something and obviously they pay for them lives and they need to go on the program. Even the one of them commit the crime, they end up a serve a sentence. They must serve a sentence because them lock up. Listen, your house can be a prison. You know? A house can be a prison. No, the next thing I hear everybody, because I'm talking about the things I hear everybody talk about right across the board. Right? It's the lack of personal attention. What do you mean by that? I mean, people are go for mo- people are go for months without being contacted and being people, somebody a check up on them well being because remember these people are waiting for court cases so when when when, you go, when when it's time to go to court they will call and say listen you're gonna have court on this date and then you need to get yourself ready by this time after that the people are on their own they are on their own more needs to be done right you need people in my opinion who's the for them job is just to constantly speak to these people it might not sound like much it might sound like a small thing, but when you lock up in a yard and you're isolated from your community, you're isolated from all your friends and your family, just having somebody call and ask if you're okay goes a long way. It might sound like a simple gesture, but trust me, it means a lot to certain people. People, listen, you're dealing with human beings. You're dealing with human beings who are social creatures, right? If you're going to have them on the program, you need these people, you need these wealthy people who are constantly checking up on them, right? Constantly, this is not something as simple as asking, you know, how your day is going, what go on? Just that right there is enough to maybe keep somebody going a little longer because it breaks people. The witness protection program breaks people the same way jail breaks break people. This is human nature. Lock up in a place forever, right, except you haven't done no crime, right? You just happen to dip on this spot at the time and you used to walk on, right? And now you're serving your own sentence. You're serving your own sentence. So, that right there is another area where you need to work on. You need to be contacting these people. Now, I know some people believe, say, witness protection program or something where um, when they go on it, then they get sent to England, go live in one nice. This is not the United States. In the United States, people get rich on the witness protection program. People become state witnesses where they even use them for other cases for, 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 for help set up other man and all. People make, you can make money in America and in places by being on the witness protection program, not in Jamaica. The perks, the only perk you can get from that is that the person who, who you're supposed to testify get found guilty. That's it. Right? The body now get rich on the witness protection program. Right? The body now they use, they're giving up a lot. To gain very little, right? To gain very little, and uh, when they put it on, on top of the fact that they live in a society where people don't even appreciate witnesses, people, people say people, the same Jamaican them, right? Who the witnesses in the witness protection program, right? Try and forget justice for another Jamaican who died. The, uh, the rest of Jamaican them say, well, them for dead because if you, if you call police and give police information, if you dead, right? That, that, that's what people say in a civic society. So, when you really think about it, they might get branded all kind of things, lock up in a house for literally years, 
getting twenty thousand dollar for buy food. You know what am I gonna do with that? Right? Nobody can go look for them and them can go look for nobody. Otherwise I'm getting a problem and them say oh you you um, you commit a breach and this and that happened to you. People give up and leave the program. No man may see walk free from certain cases, right? What them do is them drag drag out the case, delay, delay the case. Now for the times when I see because a lot of um, somebody may similarly ask me, Sir P, why are the defendant? There was a particular case in mind and the and the defendant was dragging out the case. And they were and somebody was messaging me saying, Why would why would a defendant know on the case or up and done? This is one of the reasons. Enough people, as long as they get bail, they won't mind if it stay in a court for ten years. Because the witness who is in the witness protection program, eventually they just kiss them teeth and left and give up and the person walk free. And this is why I say these people are the most neglected but the most important. Because without them, you have no case. No witness, no face, no case. That's just how it work. Right? So as I say, Dr. Chang or whoever, I don't want the um, this is one of the things where I have to at least say yeah, it's a decent program. Everybody I've spoken to says it's a decent program. But them kind of things that need to improve. The twenty thousand a month where big people I get, the thirty thousand where a couple I get, right? At least go for four or five months with nobody in the car and check up on the body. You're dealing with human beings there. You're dealing with human beings, right? And in my opinion, if if somebody, if, this is another thing I have to understand. Let's say you're on the, the the program, and a relative of yours lose them life, you have to leave the program to go start out the funeral. For me, that's ridiculous. It should be a case where you can, you're supposed to kind of sign a full team of security for move on with that person. Let's say the funeral take two weeks um, to start out. You're supposed to kind of arrange for a full security team, uh, go around with somebody for two weeks, and then after them done, go back on the program. Why are people having to choose between looking after um, the, them, the, them, them dead granny funeral or staying on the program? Why is it a choice? That shouldn't be a choice. You should be able to do both. You should be able to go out there, take care of them things, and come back. Right? If you if you, if you say your family member in a, in a Kingston Public Hospital and you want to go look for them, right? For example, your beloved cousin, uh, I'm going to take him last but and you want to go see me before he's dead. If you want to go, you have to leave the program. Why you can't have some, a team who escort the person, even if it's for a two day, when you can't find somebody to roll them for two days, for them to go check out, for them to check out, look for them relative and then go back on the program. Why man have you left the program? Because some people make up their mind, listen, before me make my, my brother, who are the only brother I have, lose him life, I'm going to see him. I'm ready to leave the program and dead. The people end up left the program because they can't bother. Listen, the program need work. It need work, but we have to give a little credit where it's due. Nobody who's ever been on the program has ever lost their life. I think that's impressive. Nobody who's, who's stayed on the program, right, and stayed under witness protection has ever lost their life, right? The people them who are used when they used to witness um, end up losing their life is because what happens is as I said they leave the program because they get fed up. Right, they get fed up and they might say, you know what, let's call it a day, brother did. And when they leave the program, then the criminals catch up with them. So this is one thing I always listen. If you're on the program and I know it's frustrating, right, but the reason why you're on the program is why you need to stay on it. Because the man they move after you, if them you say you leave the program, they're not gonna leave you alone. They will go fit, they will come for you because they must say, well, as long as you're free, you can go back on the program next time. Right? So I know it's frustrating. Right? Trust me. Uh, listen, the little bit of time where um, the world has to go under quarantine, everybody can imagine what it's like to be locked up in our house right through constant. Right? So I can just multiply that by 100 and have at least some idea of what these people are going through. Right? But yeah, there you have it, people. The most neglected but the most important people on the witness protection program. It needs funds and the funds need to be moved over. The government needs to find the money. We you know them are going to say, oh, money short and money short. Yeah, but we'll find the money if you think they want to want. When it's circus day, if everybody is, and, and everybody put on a big show and nomination, this and election, we'll find the money. The money just come out of nowhere. Right? So we know so we're not motivated when they can't find the money. We don't know where it comes from. 
But as soon as I stop me, yes, oh, one extra 50 million dollar fine, one extra 100 million dollar fine. So, listen, find it. Find it. I don't know where the middle ground is as to what kind of um, the monthly payments for them should I get, but I know 20,000 a month is too small. It's too small for what these people are going through. Right? Un listen, Mr. Politician, you wouldn't look upon your side, your side girl and give her a $20,000 fee month. When you wouldn't look upon a side chick or a mistress and give her $20,000 for the month. That can't even do her here. Much as we are looking for big people and give them that. As I say, everybody would reach out to me, they're all females, so you know it's a woman thing different already. Right? Maybe if it was a group of men, I don't know, a man can maybe more content if he does. I get, I get whatever sport him like if he can get a video game, I don't know. But I know a woman, it could be much harder for a woman sitting on a witness protection program. Nobody can go look for her, she can go look for nobody. Then it would be for a man. Right? Well, maybe I'm speaking for myself, right? I could probably do that, but I know, for example, there's no way you can convince me, no woman of me, no, can go through that so easy, right? No kind of social interaction, it must be hell. It must be hell, right? So, there you have it. People, this week, as I say, the kerosene oil series start. It won't be every single day I do a kerosene video. Those of you who remember the dance series, remember how I did that as well. Right, and in between, I'm going to have to put some other videos where, where it, you have to watch that one before the one I come after if it makes sense. Right, so that's going to happen. For example, this week, we're going to have a youth, a young youth from clans. You're going to have to hear what happened to him before the next big kerosene oil story um, video makes sense to you. Otherwise, you're going to just confuse. Right, but yes, people, the kerosene, even though she's not directly a final shot off on her body and she's not, um, you know, shoot out with police. The kerosene oil is a major, major source of chaos, death, and destruction. Anyway, Patreon Squad, we open yourself. PIA, more life. Bless.